So uh, what is atemporality? I think it's best defined as a problem in the philosophy of history. And I, I hate to resort to philosophy because I'm a novelist, but I really don't think we have any way out here. Uh, it is about the nature of historical knowledge. What we can know about the past and about the present and about the future. How do we represent and explain history to ourselves? What are its structures and its circumstances? What are the dynamics of history and futurity? What has happened before? What's happening now? What is really likely to happen next? History is not a science. History is an effort in the humanities. It's about meanings, values, language, historical identity, institutions, culture, and the philosophy of history is about very standard philosophical issues like ontology, hermeneutics, and epistemology. And I know that's true, and I can't help it. But we only have 40 minutes here. <laughs> so I want to deliver a speech that's in two parts. The first is about a temporality as a modern phenomenon. What does it look like and feel like? as it actually exists. And the second part of the speech is, what can creative artists do about that? So this is a temporality for the creative artist. Now let me start with an anecdote, because I am a novelist rather than a philosopher, and I kind of like to tell stories. So what makes an atemporal situation different from a postmodern situation? or a modernist situation, or a classicist situation. What's really different about it? Well, let me take a guy who I'm very fond of, a very immediate, hard-headed physics, scientific thinker, Richard Feynman, American physicist. Richard Feynman once wrote about intellectual labor, and he said the following. It, number one, step one, write down the problem. Step two, think really hard. Step three, write down the solution. <laughs> and, I, and I really admire the statement of Feynman's. You know, it, it, it's no nonsense. It's no fakery. It's about hard work for the intellectual laborer. You know, of course, it's a joke. But it's not merely a joke. He's trying to make it as simple as possible. I mean, really just confront the intellectual problem. But there is an unexamined assumption in Feynman's method. And it's in step one. Write down the problem. Now let me tell you how the atemporal Richard Feynman approaches this. The atemporal Richard Feynman is not very paper friendly. Because he lives in a network culture. So... It occurs to the atemporal Feynman that he may or may not have a problem. Step one, write problem in a search engine. See if somebody else has solved it already. <laughs> Step two, write problem in my blog. Study the commentary, cross-link to other guys. Step three, write my problem in Twitter in 140 characters. See if I can get it that small. See if it gets retweeted. Step four, open source the problem. Supply some instructables that get me as far as I've been able to get. See if the community takes it any farther. Step five, start a Ning social network about my problem. Name the network after my problem. See if anybody accumulates around my problem. Step six, make a video of my problem. YouTube my video, see if it spreads virally, see if any media convergence accumulates around my problem. Step seven, create a design fiction that pretends that my problem has already been solved. <laughs> create some gadget or application or product that has some relevance to my problem and see if anybody builds it. Step eight, exacerbate or intensify my problem with a work of interventionist tactical media. And step nine, find some kind of pretty illustrations 
from the Flickr looking into the past photo pool. If you don't get what a temporality is by the end of these few images, I probably can't help you. So, old Feynman, who was not the atemporal Feynman, would naturally object. You know, you have not solved the problem. You have not advanced scientific knowledge. There is no progress in this. You didn't get to step three, solving the problem. Whereas the atemporal Feynman would respond, you know, it's worse than that. I haven't even done step one of defining the problem and writing it down. But I've done a lot of work about its meaning and its value and its social framing, combined with some database mining and some collaborative filtering, which is far beyond you and your pencil. <laughs>